You know, I've always been convinced Dark Souls 2 was the most broken in the series. But after this run, I don't know what is real anymore. The entire fabric of my reality and existence has been shattered. You can practically cheese every or almost every single boss in this game. Oh, hello Aldrich. Looking good. So here is me, cheesing almost every boss in the game. This run has been cursed by multiple technical issues and that's why it took this long to make this video. Please consider subscribing to the channel for more low effort mid ass content. Now that's sexy. Oh. After giving myself the sickest name on the side of the 8 mile and choosing Pyromancer as my class and the black firebombs as my gift, I came back from the dead for some parmesan and mozzarella. I picked up my whiskey flask to digest all the cheeses I would be ingurgitating a little better, said hi to cousin Larry and grabbed the firebombs as well as the titanite shard. I think everybody and their mother knows about this, but in case you don't live in the solar system like I do, I will tell you the super secret strategy for Gundir. Practically, if you take out the sword sticking into his chest and you quit out the game as soon as he starts moving, you will respawn right outside the boss arena. Take a few steps inside and get out of there as quickly as you can and the fog wall will now appear. And then it's all a matter of waiting for Gundir to come to the fog door and once he does just chuck your bombs and fireballs at him. See? Who said Dark Souls 3 needs an easy mode anyway? Once I arrived at Firelink Shrine, I immediately went for the tree skip and got it first try for real this time, got the Estes Shard as well as the Silver Serpent Ring, and continued my journey to Lothric Castle. Here I got the Golden Pine Raisin, lit the Tower Wall Bonfire and got back to the Shrine to level up a bit. Cheese Screaming McGee over here with my fireballs, made sure to grab the Black Firebombs, and got the banner from the old lady. Then I ripped the page straight out of Dark Souls 1. Just like with Sen's Fortress Skip, by standing in this corner and parrying this hollow, you will be able to enter Death Camp while reposting. Just like that. Now it's just a matter of navigating the world with this fixed camera and controls. Perfect. Bad dog, bad dog, bad dog. I can't even see who murdered me now. Make sure you killed this dog prior to doing this glitch. Anyway, I reposted the hollow, entered the Death Camp mode, and safely made it through the room. Fortunately, all the enemies are despawned in the next area, so that's a silver lining. I entered Vort's arena and I forgot to activate the boss fight prior to attempting the skip. <sighs> so I went back, parried this guy again, ran through the area with the most annoying controls, entered the boss room once again, but this time the health bar appeared and made it out on the other side, successfully skipping the easiest boss in the game. Well. This is something you don't see all the time. I seriously want to apologize officially to Dark Souls 2. This game is far more broken. I mean, look at this guy. He's just so happy. Huh. I don't think the lore ever mentions the fact that Lothric Castle just casually levitates in the air like that. Most polished Souls game, my ass. Once in the Undead Settlement, I talked to Yol and accepted his service. Must have smoked too much green blossom though, cause I went back to the shrine to level up, totally forgetting I didn't fight Vord, meaning I was actually broke. So back to the settlement, I got the Estus shard, the ember as well as the titanite shard, freed Kornix even though I don't understand why he couldn't just teleport away like he just did now. Got the fire clutch ring and threw an elevator party with Sigmire and some other friends. Cheesed the Boreal Knight ass by using his number one weakness, doors. Ran through the road of sacrifices cause who even likes this area anyways. Dip my toes in swamp, no not like that Miyazaki. Definitely fought the two NPCs guarding Farron Keep. Arrived at everybody's ideal location for a relaxing weekend with the loved ones. Picked up all the goodies, mainly consisting in tit shards, turned off the first two fires, got the dream chaser's ash, and put out the last chimney. Abyss watchers can be totally broken by just standing here in this right position, do an R2 attack, quit out as soon as you get the control back, and once you get back in, you will be stuck inside the fog door just like me, and you will have to redo the entire run again to get this skip. Yay! So I created a new character. Cheesed Udex once again, successfully got the skip for Vord, but I forgot to get the banner. So I got the damn thing, skipped Vord once again, successfully this time, 
got back to the Abyss Watchers fight, attempted the glitch, and... Damn it! I'm stuck again! <sighs> so, I created yet another character, because save files are for casuals. And I decided to try a different approach by skipping the Crystal Sage, which I strongly recommend you don't try this, because it is actually harder than the boss itself. At least it was for me. Basically, you have to jump from this pile of bricks onto this little spot next to the door. And only learning this jump will be annoying as fuck. Then, start running and jumping hoping to gods that you will make it onto this even smaller ledge. And after literal decades, you will finally be able to fall on the other side of the gap, officially cock blocking yourself. So make sure you'll let go of your left stick after you jump. It should look a little bit like this. Just like in real life, I managed to almost fuck up everything, and after cuddling the neighbor's dog, I picked up the Astora's greatsword, gave some cash to the hobo in the church, and entered a painting Mary Poppins style. Looked around for some large tits, <clears throat> sped through the entire area because nobody fights the enemies in this DLC anyways. You know, it's all about run, grab the items you need, and get out. After successfully testing if gravity still works, by the way, in case you were wondering, it still does, you're welcome. I arrived at the bonfire at the bottom, then completely forgot that I still needed to talk to Yol. So I killed myself enough times to level up to the fullest, farm some souls, upgraded my dexterity without telling anyone about it. Oh yeah, this is gonna be hella fun. So I got the large titanite shards from the crystal lizards in Farron Keep, gave the straight demon a taste of my big swords for level and upgrades, got the Astora sword to plus four, dumped some points into dex, strength and intelligence, picked up the Gilden Scroll as well as some fashion and bought magic weapon from Orbit. And I was ready to take my revenge from the Abyss Watchers. You know, it works better if he starts the fight with his dash attack so that he ends up with the wall behind him. And then at that point just do a strong attack and... Ladies and gentlemen, the power of cheese. Be careful of the other watcher, but if you plus 4 your weapon, even without buffs, you should be able to kill him before the other one reaches for you. Second phase is the easiest part, because there is only one guy to be worried about. Upgrading my IQ points to a total of 26, I ran through the catacombs of Carthus, lit the bonfire with my buddy over here, arrived in Smoldering Lake, cheesed the Solaire, got all the large titanite shards I could find on my path as well as the chunks. After farming off stream to reach 30 intelligence, and after buying the Pestilent Mist spell from Orbeck, you can access the spell from him after giving him any of the magic scrolls, I killed Volnir in his sleep, like a coward. I was honestly too much afraid to face the hardest boss in the game. Wolnir wasn't the only one I killed, but Grandma as well had to go. And after buying a bow and as many arrows I could carry from the old lady in Firelink, I went on to cheese the dancer herself. And this one is extremely easy. Stand right here and slowly start moving towards the fog wall. As soon as you get the prompt for entering the boss fight, enter the arena. And when you're in the middle of the fog wall, start backstepping. If you did this correctly, you shouldn't hear the boss music playing. Meaning that you successfully froze her AI or something, I don't really know the exact details. I just know that if you start shooting your arrows at her, she doesn't react at all. Meaning that if you have enough, well, boss goes dead and me win. Now it would be a good moment to hit that subscribe button. I don't really have a glitch or anything for Deacons, Pestilent Mist was mostly useful in the second phase, you are better off just swinging your greatsword until the Pope shows up and at that moment just get them high with the crack smoke.
I continued my journey for ultimate cheese in Erythil, where I killed Pontiff's Beast and practically skipped half of Erythil by performing this jump right here. Oh yeah, what a polished and perfect game this is, but you know, it reminds me of old school games where you wouldn't get a prompt telling you you left the area of the mission or something and then get forced by the game into the set path. Many modern games today just tend to be so restricting. Anyways, by sort of following this path, you should be able to reach Distant Manor. Pontiff can be cheesed by getting him stuck on this pillar and by letting him smoke your Zaza, but it's very inconsistent and he can break out of it any moment, especially when he calls out the shadow, so I simply parried the mofo into a humiliating death. And with the power of my poking stick it was time to move on to the next lord. Similar to Dancer, just stand in this position and slowly walk towards the fog wall. As soon as you get the prom, enter the fight and then backstab. This will make Aldrich just look like a stupid fool, incapable of reacting to anything you throw at him. Before continuing on, I got the Captain's Ashes and the Millwood Bow from the DLC, got Aldia to get a little bit closer to his ancestors, and I then upgraded my Swell Swords to plus 9. Osiris smashed his baby on the ground, so I got him stuck behind the pillar and used Pestilent Mist to avenge his newly born son. Yorm, instead, forgot to hide away the secret magic sword that is capable of destroying him, so I used it against him and he died. Unfortunately, Dragon Slayer armor cheese can only be tasted with an internet connection because you will have to invade somebody and as soon as you get the prompt that you are invading someone's world enter the arena and once you've invaded the other unfortunate soul's world black crystal out of there and when you'll get back in the game you will spawn outside the boss arena but the armor will still be active. At this point just wait for him to come close to you and use Pestilent Mist to finish him. After upgrading my bow to plus 5, I paid a visit to the two brothers that definitely love each other way too much if you know what I mean. So I entered the boss fight just to activate it and quit out, respawned outside the fog wall, aimed right here, charged the R2 attack from the Millwood bow and unleashed the true power of Camembert cheese. When you see the health bar move, shoot a few more arrows for good measure and you won't be able to hit him. And at that point just enter the arena and he will be frozen. Meaning that you can do the most unspeakable things while he suffers in silence and his brother has to watch. When second phase start, just use Pestilent Mist on them. The paraplegic will definitely die first, so here is the funny part. The recording of this fight with my original character was so corrupted it was practically unusable. So, since I didn't want to remake a character and go through the game again, I had an old character almost at the end of an NG plus 5 run, so I used that instead. So with this character I had to hit the second brother once before the explosion, in order to kill him while he was climbing on his brother's back. Anyway, yeah. This run has been total hell. Now, Cinders is no difference. I used the Red Tear Soul Ring for some extra damage, cause it does stagger and move, so you will have to adjust your aim. And you might need a few tries, but you'll eventually get it.
I had to stitch this run together and it was no simple task. The result has been a bit janky I know, but if you are a Souls fan, then you also know that you're a fan of jank. I know the title says every single boss and don't worry I'm not going C now despite my 27 years of age. I'm continuing this run in part 2 where I'll handle the remaining bosses and the DLC. But here it is. Hopefully this video can help some of you get past that impossible boss that has been nagging you for days. Dark Souls 2 is next, but first I'm going to make a stop in the lands between to see if I can beat it as a human torch. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't, and I feel like the wait for the Elden Ring expansion is going to make me oh my god go hollow, but I sense like the dark ages are about to end. Thank you so much and love you all, we're so close to 4000 subscribers and it's actually crazy so from the bottom of my heart, Thank you.